blood is a fluid vital to biological life. In today's program, we'll look at its role, explain the various blood types, and some of the main pathologies of blood. Because we breathe and air goes into our lungs, we believe that that's where the essential exchange of gases takes place. But once the oxygen has reached the alveoli, how is it carried to the tissues in our body? It's blood that takes the oxygen to each of our cells. In fact, that is the role of the red corpuscles in blood. The red corpuscles owe their color to a pigmented molecule, hemoglobin. This protein contains an atom of iron and has the property of creating reversible links with oxygen. Hemoglobin is a lot like chlorophyll, which is present in vast amounts in plants and responsible for their green color. In fact, the structure of both these molecules is very much the same. It is even thought to be the ancestor of hemoglobin in the evolutionary chain of life on Earth. Transporting oxygen is not blood's only function. It has a host of other roles that are just as vital. For all members of the animal kingdom, blood is the sap of life. In reptiles, as in mammals, blood, a red and viscous fluid, has a number of vital functions and cannot be replaced by any chemical substance. Blood is the river that irrigates and feeds the continent of the human body. Traveling through the organism in a complex network of different sized vessels, blood carries to the body cells the oxygen and nutrients they need to survive. Blood also rids the organism of the system's wastes, such as carbon dioxide. In addition, it plays a crucial role in combating disease. Blood is produced by bone marrow cells. Bone marrow is where the basic blood cells are formed. Through a complex process, basic blood cells change and produce the three main elements of blood. The red corpuscles, the white corpuscles, and the platelets. It is the tissues which, through hormones, order the bone marrow to produce what the body requires. Adult humans have between four and five liters of blood, namely 8% of their body weight. The heart pumps the blood, which is then oxygenated by the lungs and sent through the arteries. This is the light red arterial blood. The blood then travels through the arteries, which constrict to become arterioles, then capillaries. When it has completed its journey, the blood returns filled with waste by another route, via the veinlets and veins. It is venous blood of a slightly bluish tint, the blood we can see in the veins of our forearms. The waste in the blood is then eliminated through our skin, kidneys, and lungs. The most important exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs in the alveoli of the lungs. Blood is chiefly composed of a yellowish fluid that serves as a solvent for the elements in it. That fluid, which accounts for more than half of blood volume, is called plasma. Plasma, which is 92% water, contains the organism's nutrients, proteins, fats, mineral salts, etc. Plasma also contains the three main components of blood, the red cells, white cells, and platelets. Red cells, or corpuscles, are minute flexible sacs which carry oxygen. The sacs are in the shape of small discs, two thousandths of a millimeter across and live for about 120 days. Each drop of blood contains approximately five million red cells. If you were to put all of an adult person's red cells in a row, you would get a chain some 50,000 kilometers long that would circle the Earth 
one and a half times. During their short lifespan, red cells make the trip between the lungs and body tissues roughly 75,000 times. At the end of their life, the red cells return to the bone marrow where they are destroyed. For red cells, bone marrow not only constitutes their place of birth and an incubator, it is also their cemetery. Red cells consist of water and a red protein, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is what gives blood its red color. It is also the substance on which 97% of the oxygen intended for the tissues settles. The remainder of the oxygen is dissolved in the plasma. The number of red blood cells in a person can vary from one geographical region to another. For instance, in the Himalayas, people living in high altitude regions have adapted to the scarcity of oxygen by developing more red blood cells than people living in the plains. Beyond an altitude of 6,000 meters, the red cell count in humans increases by 50%. Blood also possesses its own army to defend against intruders. The army is made up of white cells called leukocytes. These bodyguards of the organism are divided into five categories, each one assigned different duties. Some white cells can travel up the bloodstream and pierce the walls of cells to attack an intruder. Leukocytes outweigh red blood cells a thousand to one and combat not only viruses and other infectious agents, but also environmental pollutants which end up in our blood. As for the platelets, they are tiny cell entities which make blood clot. They are like minute plugs that seal ruptures in blood vessels. Brought together in a single substance, all these components constitute life's essential fluid. Whether caused by an accident or a hemorrhage, a loss of 30% of blood volume is dangerous. A 50% loss is fatal. No wonder the first transfusions were attempted so long ago. We owe the famous ABO system to an American of Austrian descent, Carl Landsteiner. His system is still used today to determine blood groups and pair donor-receiver couples. No blood, no life. A loss of too much blood as a result of an accident or injury spells death. It is not surprising, then, that the blood transfusion came into being. Blood cannot, however, be transfused from one person to another without taking a number of precautions. Indeed, there may be, between two people, an incompatibility of some of the elements in their bloods, which could cause rejection in the receiver. Rejection causes hemolysis, that is, the destruction of the red blood cells. This can prove fatal. To make blood transfusion safe, blood types or groups were determined. The first classification method was the ABO system, invented at the turn of the century. Even today, the ABO system remains the basis of blood type classification. All human beings are necessarily either of blood type A, B, AB, or O. These blood groups correspond to the names of antigens red blood cells may carry. Red cells may carry one or two of these antigens, or none at all, in which case the blood type is O. To complicate matters, antigens must be paired to antibodies opposed to the antigens the organism lacks in order to confirm blood type. For example, to belong to blood type A, you have to have both the A antigen and the anti-B antibody, whereas to belong to type B, you need the B antigen and the anti-A antibody. 
people without A or B antigens, but with their opposite antibodies, belong to type O. Blood also has many other antigens that may prove incompatible with the receiver. Most humans, for instance, have the rhesus antigen. Bearers of this antigen are called Rh positive, and the others, Rh negative. The ABO system combined with the rhesus factor, positive or negative, make up the classification system used today. Whole blood is seldom used in medicine. Rather, it is broken down into its various elements. A blood donation will serve to prepare a number of substances, including red cell concentrates, platelet concentrates, and plasma. Blood is mainly broken down by centrifugal force. This procedure breaks the blood down in such a way that plasma is obtained in the upper part of the test tube, followed by a thin layer of white cells in the middle and a concentrate of red cells at the bottom. The platelets form a very fine layer above the red cells. Other blood elements, such as albumin, a protein that regulates blood pressure, can also be obtained. Each product has its own specific therapeutic properties. White blood cells, however, are seldom preserved as they have almost no medical application. Every donation of blood must, of course, be tested, not only to be classified, but also to avoid transmitting certain diseases. Blood is systematically screened for three diseases, syphilis, AIDS and hepatitis B. It is also screened for irregular antibodies, which constitute a risk factor in blood transfusions. Thanks to anti-clotting substances, the various elements of blood can be preserved by freezing. Freezing red cells at minus 80 degrees Celsius will preserve the cells for 10 years. At less extreme temperatures, red cell concentrates can be preserved in liquid form for 35 days. Plasma can be preserved for one year at a temperature of minus 30 degrees. The platelets must be made within six hours after the donation and can be preserved at room temperature for five days. Blood regenerates quickly, so an adult can safely give 450 milliliters of blood every two months. Bone marrow makes new red cells within five days. To avoid risk of rejection and to make up for often precariously low blood banks, doctors are increasingly suggesting transfusions of the patient's own blood. This means that a few weeks prior to surgery, patients donate their own blood for a transfusion they may need during the operation. This is one of the safest ways to avoid virus transmission and is likely to become increasingly popular in the coming years. In the case of some pathologies, the transfusion of specific elements of blood is essential. This is the case of hemophilia, a pathology known since antiquity. It's also the case of porphyria, a strange disease. A Canadian researcher discovered that a certain type of porphyria prevents the normal production of hemoglobin. Today we give these patients injections of the substance they lack. But in the old days, it might well be that people suffering from this disease drank a lot of blood. We are within a hair of scientifically rewriting the story of Dracula. There are many blood diseases, but not all of them are quite so gruesome. Hematology is the branch of medicine that deals with blood disorders. 
There are many of them since any change in the balance of blood's various elements inevitably causes some pathology or other. Anemia is probably one of the most common blood diseases. It is a weakening of the blood caused by a reduction of one or several elements. Usually, it is the red cells that are lacking, or their main component, hemoglobin, which is high in iron. The symptoms of anemia are overall fatigue and breathlessness. In fact, the organism is trying to compensate for the scarcity of oxygen reaching the tissue cells. Depending on the nature and seriousness of the case, Anemia is treated by making up for the lacking element through dietary supplements or a transfusion. Hemophilia, which is rarer, is a hereditary disorder of the blood due to the absence of certain coagulation factors, among which is factor 8, a protein in plasma. Without these coagulants, the slightest cut, the slightest internal injury, causes prolonged bleeding since the blood does not clot. Hemophilia is due to a genetic defect. Oddly, the disorder is transmitted by women, but only affects men. Queen Victoria apparently transmitted the disease to several of her sons. If a hemophiliac has children, his male descendants will be normal but his daughters will carry the disease. Currently, the only treatment for hemophilia is an intravenous injection of factor VIII, obtained by breaking down the blood. An incredible amount of blood is required to obtain enough factor VIII to treat hemophilia. Recently, however, researchers have managed to synthesize the protein factor VIII. Clinical tests are ongoing. But the worst blood disorder by far is leukemia. The name leukemia groups, in fact, several types of blood cancer. Like all cancers, leukemia is caused by an uncontrollable multiplication of certain cells. In leukemia, it is the white blood cells which suddenly begin to proliferate at an amazing pace. Overproduction by the bone marrow of these white cells suppresses the production of normal white cells, red cells, and platelets. That's why leukemia is usually accompanied by anemia and a platelet deficiency, recognizable by blue spots on the victim's body. To fight leukemia, doctors have to resort to drastic lengths, radiation therapy, or the injection of chemical substances, chemotherapy. But both these treatments present a disadvantage. They attack all cells which reproduce quickly, including the healthy cells in bone marrow, which produces blood. To enable the organism to withstand heavy doses of radiation and chemotherapy, doctors are now transplanting bone marrow. A bone marrow transplant involves first withdrawing healthy bone marrow from a compatible donor, usually a brother or sister. As a rule, some 105 milliliter punctures are required to obtain enough marrow for a marrow transplant. The marrow is then injected into the patient intravenously. We will never be able to test every blood donation for all possible infections. For that reason, a number of research teams the world over are attempting to recreate the different elements of blood artificially. Artificial blood products will eliminate the risks of transmitting diseases 
such as the AIDS virus, through transfusions. Research is currently underway on the use of fluorocarbons, a chemical substance which might perform the role of red cells, which is to carry oxygen to body cells. Other researchers are concentrating on recreating hemoglobin from animal cells on which human genes have been transplanted. No matter how promising all this research seems, the worldwide demand for blood product is so great that it is unlikely we will ever be able to do without donors. For the future, scientists predict the end of the blood transfusion. Patients will be given shots of blood substitutes made from genetic mutations, bacterial cultures, chemical syntheses. The research is well underway. However, there will always be instances when the only thing to hit the spot will be a good pint of blood. <laughs>